I call this the magic turnaround chord because it can be used in so many turnarounds. It can be used when you're soloing and it can make you feel and sound like you really know what you're doing. The notes of this turnaround are made up of a fully diminished chord with one added note in there. We're going to cover that in a little bit. In order to learn this pattern and how you can play it over any chord starting on any note, you've got to learn three fully diminished chords. There are only three total fully diminished chords to learn. And once you've got those under your fingers, you can do so much with it. I hope you really invest yourself in this with me today. It's going to be magic for you. personally coached by an expert and be part of a sax circle with a community of other sax lovers just like you where you're getting feedback from all of them there's customized lessons made just for you for exactly what you need right where you're at and then they're shared out to the community and then there's feedback among everybody and you're getting feedback from me throughout the week too then just schedule a call with me and I'll show you what that looks like and how to get you there because I promise you in the end you're going to get results you're going to be the sax player you want to be and if you're worried about the price of things well let me ask you this what is the cost of not doing it and that sounds salesy and just to be up front there is a cost to it imagine you bought a car that needed brakes needed an alternator and, and had bad tires you know you get it for 200 bucks well over the course of the next year you're gonna spend way more than you probably would have if you would have just bought a five thousand dollar car and that's just the fact so wouldn't you agree with me that it's better to spend a little bit more money and guarantee yourself to get results? <laughs> I mean, it's amazing what you're going to get out of this. It, just the players that have been doing this, they, they come out, they're improvising, they're reading better, they're playing what they can hear, they're playing by ear, they're playing what they hear in their head, and all of a sudden, within the first week, they're going, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Yeah, others beat me on price. You could go some cheaper one-on-one -on -one lessons and little YouTube examples here and there and, and just be scattered all over the place. And in the end, not really come away with much. Or you could pay a little bit more and be guaranteed to get awesome results from someone who's going to work with you and be invested in you. And I personally will be in contact with you throughout the week for an entire year. Schedule a call with me and let's work through that and figure out how I can get you there. Okay, so here we go. In order to not be stuck as an improviser or stuck when you're trying to solo, whether you're playing Autumn Leaves or Blue Bossa or almost any tune out there, knowing your fully diminished triads, these, these three chords I'm about to show you, then how you can plug them in, you know, uh, to any chord you see will make you sound great and it will give you a really tasty lick that will make you sound like you really know what you're doing and then you won't be stuck anymore it'll give it's going to lift you out it's gonna, <laughs> it's going to really lift your soloing ability and it's going to make it really fun okay here we go okay here we go there are only 3 fully diminished chords there's this one this one and this one if you can learn the notes in each of these then you're going to have a tool that you can use in so many places let's explore it so let's go back to this first one you know if b was in the bass this would be a b fully diminished <laughs> B, D, F, G sharp, each one of those intervals is a minor third. So it's three half steps between every single note. Now watch what happens. Let me skip down here. If we keep going minor thirds on top of that, it's the exact same notes over and over. So from the bottom to the top. <laughs> That is a fully diminished chord, and if you can get comfortable with going those notes all the way up and down, then you're going to have a tool that's going to allow you to do that magic turnaround and a whole bunch of other stuff. I'm telling you, it's, it's beautiful. So that would be a B fully diminished chord. Now let's go here. This one would be a C fully diminished from C to E flat, G flat, A. Again, those are just minor third intervals. 
And likewise, C sharp, C sharp, E, G, B flat. If you notice, this is going B to C to C sharp. If we went to a D, which would be the next kind of half step up, well, look, it's right here. So there's only three notes to start on. The, if you start on B or C or C sharp, you will produce all three fully diminished chords. And if that's kind of hard to wrap your head around right now, don't worry about it. Just know that if you memorize these three sets of notes, it's going to be so good for you. If you can do that, then the magic turnaround is going to be really cool. So back to here, here's this middle chord, this C. If you did a C fully diminished, you play those four notes, and then you can just repeat the notes all the way up the scale. Okay, so that is a fully diminished C chord. Now a C sharp fully diminished, if we added the notes up above, we would go... So, those are the full three fully diminished chords. Okay, so now check this out. This would be a B fully diminished. That little degree sign there and a seven means fully diminished seventh chord. So, this is a B fully diminished seventh. Or it's a D fully diminished seventh, or it's an F fully diminished seventh, or it's a G sharp fully diminished seventh. So whether you see that, 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 it's the exact same four notes inside that chord. Now let's move on to the next one. So a C fully diminished chord would be these four notes. An E flat fully diminished seventh, or a G flat fully diminished seventh, or an A fully diminished seventh. Anytime you saw one of those chord symbols like that, you could play these four notes. Again, what we're headed to is the magic turnaround, which adds one note to it. <laughs> You'll get there. We're going to get there. This is just really helping you to understand, have a better understanding of fully diminished chords and at least getting something under your belt, a tool that you can use. I'm telling you, if you memorize these, what you see on the screen right now, if you memorize those four notes and those four and those four in order up and down your horn and extend it up above and below. For example, like right here, here's a C. But if I played the A below it, just like up here, C to A, but below it. And then the next note below that would be a G flat or an F sharp. So learning to play this the entire range of your horn is going to be really helpful. We've got those chords. Now over here, this would be a C sharp fully diminished seventh, E fully diminished seventh, G fully diminished, B flat fully diminished. I'm just doing this to show you that there can be multiple chord names that have the exact same notes in them. And that is why learning just three sets of notes or three chords or three scales, if you will, <laughs> makes it something that you can use in so many spots without having to learn a zillion things. It will get you unstuck really fast. Okay, so I played Blue Bossa for you a little bit ago. Right there, that A7, right there is where you can just stick that magic turnaround chord in, and it is magic, and I already showed that to you. So this is a typical jazz standard. So whether you're playing Blue Bossa or Autumn Leaves, I'm going to show that to you here in the end of the video. Um, you know, you can stick this over a dominant seventh chord there, over the dominant seventh there. You can stick it over uh, this minor seven flat five, that minor seven flat five, that minor seven. I'm telling you, just to go back, if you knew all three of these patterns, you could pick just one of them to play over that minor seven chord, that minor seven chord, that minor seven flat five, one of those three patterns will work over all of those chords. Now, if you work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I will give you the tools and I'll set the roadmap for you that will teach you and show you exactly how and when and where to do that. But now you're gonna have, you're gonna be getting a really good understanding that, hey, fully diminished chords can fit in a lot of places. Now let's talk just about this one right here because this is the one that I played in the Magic Turnaround when I first started this video. Okay, so here we are, C sharp, E, G, B flat. 
I want to show you something. These three notes right here are three of the notes in an A7 chord. They are the three notes in an A dominant seventh. So the C sharp is the third. So I'll throw a little thing in here right now. If you start a fully diminished chord on the third of a dominant seventh, now this might be a lot to wrap, wrap your head around, and that's okay. But if you start on the third and play the fully diminished seventh, it's beautiful. And that's what I did in the beginning of this video. But again, I'm going to make it really simple for you. So this is an A7. An A7 chord goes A, C sharp, E, G. But if you play starting on this note, a fully diminished seventh chord on top of it, it works. Now, the magic part is this. What if you throw an A right between the G and the B flat? <laughs> it makes it an A7 flat 9, which is a fully diminished chord. Oh, it's man, it's all, it's incredible. Watch this. I'm going to go here. I'm just going to play this. Now I'm going to throw this A in between. Oh man, it works. It's such a cool lick. Now, the next thing is an A dominant seventh always wants to go to a D chord. So if you've studied two five ones, you'll know that any chord always kind of acts like the five of the next chord. So an A is the five of D. So it wants to go to D. You will often see, and you saw today in uh, Blue Bossa and so many tunes, a will go to D. So check this out. If you play this pattern, ba da 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 da, and then the next note after C sharp lands on D, it fits exactly. So here's what I'm about to play. I'm gonna go ba da 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 like that. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. It works great. So just to reiterate, here is a fully diminished chord. And if you learn those patterns, great. Then if you simply add that note in between, that is the magic turnaround. And the pattern goes boom, 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 boom. And then coming down, you skip that A. Boom, boom, boom. So you play all the notes going up, skip the A coming down. And then most often this note, when you've played this the last time, it will just go right up to the next chord. So that is the magic turnaround. In this case, A7 goes to D. It almost always does, right? Just like that. I want you to know this. This right here, the actual name of it is an A7 flat nine. Now, a lot of people can't wrap your head around what a flat nine is and all that, but I want you to know whether you see an A7 flat nine or an E fully diminished, they are exactly the same. And these notes fit exactly into both of those chords. And if you see an E minor seven flat five, it's just I won't go into it right now, but that is only one note different from this, but this pattern still works inside that. It really does. Or if you just see a simple E minor seven, it will work in there, okay? This is kind of simple. This is a little bit more of an extension. This is really a bigger extension, and this is just the only difference between these two is what notes in the bass. But again, if you were to see any of these chords, you could play this pattern and it will sound beautiful. It will sound so jazzy. Okay, now let's put this in a real world situation. So here's Autumn Leaves, right? Here's the melody from the beginning. Okay, so that was the first line there, right there. I want to show you how <laughs> you can take the magic turnaround and all the sound sudden sounds super tasty with a cool lick that sounds like you really know what you're doing. So here's what I'm going to do. Imagine I just played the song, you know, and now I'm coming back and I'm going to solo. And when I solo, I'm going to play ba da da ba da da. I'm just going to kind of improvise a little bit, but when I hit this chord, 
boom, I am going to play a fully diminished. I'm going to play the magic turnaround. And by the way, an E7 chord is made up of an E, G sharp, B, D. That is what an E7 chord is. But check it out. Boom, if I add the E right there and then another minor third, this right here is called a fully diminished triad, a fully diminished chord, and it works. This is the magic turnaround. Now listen to this. I'm going to play from there to there as if I was soloing. <laughs> Now, I wouldn't really do that as a solo. I wouldn't really kind of just come right out of the gate and play a turn around like that. But I just wanted you to see how it fits in there. Let me do that again. Um, you know, let me play through the whole melody and then come back into it and you'll kind of see how it works. <laughs> See how I just kind of fit that turnaround, the magic turnaround on that chord? Now, again, I wouldn't kind of do that, but I wanted to take a really popular tune, and I did a lesson here a while back on Autumn Leaves, and I thought it might stick out to you. But look down here. You could stick a fully diminished magic turnaround on that chord right there. You could do it on that one. You could do it on that one, that one, that one. Oh, it's amazing. So now to make a connection to two five ones and how this fits into the big picture. So what you see, you see the chords on the screen over here, this C sharp fully diminished chord will work over all these chords over here, over the A seven flat nine, over the E fully diminished, over the E seven, E minor seven flat five, and over the E minor seven. These sounds like a lot to wrap your head around. But as you build one step at a time, it becomes something that's very doable. And this will be exciting if you just learn to do one turnaround and fit it into a tune that you play, okay? And if you join me with expert coaching in my SAC circle, I provide all of that for you. And I accelerate your learning to where you're just learning and playing so fast. Again, if you remember, this would also be called an E fully diminished. And that works because you see over here, there's E fully diminished chord. And this might take a little bit more to understand, but check it out. Whatever this note right here on the bottom is, if it's the third of a chord, like an A7, the third of an A7 is C sharp. So whatever dominant seventh down here is, if you go to its third and you play a fully diminished seventh or the magic turnaround chord, it works and it works really great. That is why this fully diminished chord is gonna work over here off to the side, what you see on the A7 flat nine, the E fully diminished, E minor seven flat five and the E minor seven, okay? So here it goes, I want you to see an example of that. First time. So in case that is confusing, and believe me, I get it, all of these extensions off to the right, like sevens and flat five, flat nine, and what does that mean? Let's just really simplify it. Every time you see a letter chord with a seven on it, you can play a fully diminished triad on top of it. What I mean by that is if you see a chord and I don't mean a minor, not when it says minor, but just a dominant seventh, a, a letter with a seven. If you can figure out what that chord's third is, because every chord has a first, third, and fifth, 
This is the first. Think about it. A, B, C, D, E. So A is the first, C is the third, and E is the fifth. And if you add a little seven on it like this, that makes G is the seventh. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So A7, if you can figure out what the third note is, then if you take that third note and you build a fully diminished chord above it, it will sound really good. And then if you will fit the name of the chord, like an A, and put it right in there and create this, now it's really tasty and this is the magic turnaround. I know this can be really confusing, but let's go up and look at something else to see if it helps solidify it a little bit more. Okay, so no matter what dominant seventh chord you're playing, if one of these four notes is the third, do you remember, let's jump over here. Do you remember how we said C sharp is the third of an A chord, meaning A, B, C? So C, or C sharp in this case, is the third. If you can figure out what the third is and then build a dominant, a fully diminished chord above it, it, it works. So if any one of these four notes was the third of the chord, this whole thing will work. If any one of these notes was the third of a chord, they will work. Same here. What I mean by that, check this out. B is the third of a G7 chord. This works over G7. D is the third of a B flat 7 chord. This would work over that. F is the third of a D flat 7 chord. These notes will work. Now this can get really hairy, but I'm just trying to show you how it works. Let's go over here. C is the third of an A flat 7 chord. All these notes would work on that. E flat is the third of a B chord. G flat is the third of, let's call it F sharp, it's the third of a D chord. And A is the third of an F chord. If you can figure out what the third is of the chord you're playing and just build a magic turnaround above it, you will sound super tasty. Or you can just memorize them. Now, in order to memorize them, you'll have to get with me and join my SAC circle. And, and I give those resources. I give you all the PDFs and show you how to do it. I work with you one-on-one. -on -one. I develop uh, customized lessons just for you right where you're at, your level of understanding. Because where your level of understanding is, someone else, someone else is in that exact same spot. And then we share that out to the whole community. It's, it's awesome. And then everybody kind of goes back and forth and that understanding starts to come. And then what happens is, remember this example, if you've seen this before with me, these jumbled numbers that look like this, all of a sudden begin to, oh, look like this. Oh, it's a phone number. The light bulb will start to come on. All this stuff that's fuzzy right now gets clearer and it goes step by step. Believe me. This took me a long time, but I didn't have someone coaching me step by step. And you will. That This is why so many of my students have said they would so much rather do this collaborative work, this join the SAC circle, rather than do one-on-one. -on -one. You know, one-on-one, -on -one, you just see your teacher once a week or once every other week. In this case, with my SAC circle, you're seeing me almost every day and you're getting videos and customized lessons and you're interacting with everybody else in the group and you can chat and leave comments and play examples and play for me and I'll play back for you. Man, it's awesome. That is what the magic turnaround is. And it's made up of a fully diminished chord. There's only three total fully diminished chords to learn. And then if you throw the name of the chord note into it, it becomes a magic turnaround. It's beautiful. If you want to know more, contact me. Schedule a call with me and let's get you inside the program so we can get you results, okay? I only have room for 15 calls in the next five days. Once those calls are booked, that's it. I'm done. The door's closed and I am going to move on with my program. I look forward to talking to you soon.